I'm getting asked more and more lately about photo processing. So I'm working on a short tutorial that shows exactly how I process my photos minimally for exactly the look and feel I want straight out of Lightroom. But first, today I have a super quick tutorial to show you the first five moves I make in Lightroom before making any color or exposure adjustments. It's a super short tutorial, so let's get right to it. Before we start, to all you new subscribers, thank you. I'm super excited about how the community is growing here and I look forward to meeting you online. And if you're new here, we do simple to understand photography and video tutorials, insights and reviews. So hit that subscribe button, you won't be sorry. So there are a few things I do before processing every single photo on Lightroom. These are steps that ensure that my unedited photo is optimized to be processed properly. They take me less than a minute or so to do typically, and I'm going to show you exactly how and why today. All right, here we are in Lightroom and I've got an image loaded up from Banff in Canada a little while back at Spare Lake. And so let's just run through these five steps I take in every single image really quickly. The first thing I do on every single image is crop my image. And that's this little dotted line right here in a rectangle at the top right above the basic panel. And the reason I do this is because I find that it makes it much easier for me to see exactly what I'm working with in both the colors and the balance of the image when I go to color correct and adjust the exposure to exactly what I want it to be. And so for this image, just taking a glance at it, I feel like there's a little bit too much sky and I don't really love these rocks down here in the image. I feel like they're distracting these little rocks. I could go into Photoshop and kind of either blend those out or clone stamp them with trees. But like I said, I don't really love spending a ton of time in Photoshop. So I'd rather just crop the image just a little bit to take away those distractions and see if that gets me to where I want to be. Now, sometimes it won't and I will have to go into Photoshop, but on an image like this, I feel like we can get pretty close just like this. And that looks good as a starting point. I may come back and adjust it a little bit later, but it looks pretty good right now. And then the second step I take is I go to lens correction. And if you're using a raw file, Lightroom will pick up on what camera and what lens you're using as that's embedded in your metadata of that image. And so this picked up that I'm using the Sony a7R 3 and the 16 to 35 millimeter 2.8 G Master. And it knows that I've got my color profile in camera set to Adobe RGB and it picks up on that here. And so what this is doing is it's looking to compensate for either distortion or vignetting that's caused with your camera and lens combination. So if you see here, if I unclick this and then I click it, you'll see that there's distortion in my lens from the super wide angle of shooting at 16 millimeters and some vignetting down here in the corners. And so when I click it back on, you'll see that that vignetting disappears and it disappears up here and it flattens the image out a little bit so it looks less distorted and more like your eye might see it. And sometimes I will actually leave this unchecked depending on whether or not I like how it's looking. But in this instance, I think it helps, especially with these dark trees down here. And it just helps to bring just a little bit more depth into the photo, I think. And right above that is the chromatic aberration option. And so if you're shooting night photos or Milky Way shots, sometimes you'll have some purple fringing around stars in a little circle, and this will help remove that. And sometimes it happens with metal in bright light, like on an architecture shot or something like that. You can check this and it won't do anything. If there's no chromatic aberration, it's just searching for it. It's kind of a defensive move. It's not going to hurt you. I, or at least I've never found it's hurt me. And so sometimes I just leave it checked just in case and I don't see any with my eyes right now, but we'll just leave it like that. And so then the next move I make is I go to detail and in Lightroom defaults the sharpening level to 40 on Sony raw images. And so what I will do here is I will hold down option on a Mac keyboard and I believe it's alt on a Windows keyboard. And when I do that and I come down here to the mask, it will show what is being sharpened with that mask. So if I leave it at zero, there's no mask, the entire image is being sharpened. And as I move that to the right, 
it will mask out certain parts of the image and it will be searching for high contrast areas where, where there's an outline of an object, like right down here in the trees, you can see. If I mask that, you can see how it's just outlining those trees. And so I will typically put this above 80% maybe 90 and even as much as 100% sometimes depending on the image but in this one it looks about 90% is good and what I'm trying to do here is get these trees sharpened just a little bit but avoid sharpening the clouds pretty much at all and there's a couple of spots in there but it's not really that much so I think that that's going to be okay and so I'll leave the sharpening right about 40 maybe 45 or 50 depending on the image and again I like how this image is right here so I, I really don't like to over sharpen my images I think that they come out looking a little bit too digital if you do that so right about there right about 40 is good for me and so we'll leave it there and then the last move I make is I go up to the basic panel here and right at the top you can see there's a drop down menu and this says Adobe Color on it. Now this is typically what the default setting is for a Sony image coming into Lightroom and it's reading that I use Adobe RGB and it assumes the Adobe Color as a starting point. And each of these options will give you a different starting point for your raw image. And so you can see that the Vivid is super vivid. It's probably got a little bit more vibrance and saturation already baked into it as a starting point. Adobe Portrait will probably be a little bit more flat and work with skin tones a little bit better. And then Adobe Landscape, it really sharpens these landscapes and it, it's a little bit too crispy for me as a starting point, so I don't like that. Adobe Color, like I said, where it usually starts is just a little bit more punch to it. It's a little bit more saturated, but I like to start in Adobe Standard typically. That's my starting point. It's the most flat of the profiles to start from. And it feels like to me, it's the optimal starting point for me to start processing. Now remember, these are raw images. And so what it's doing is it's interpreting that raw data from your file and it's coming up with a starting point. And if I loaded this image into Capture One, it would look a little bit different than it does here. And it's because Capture One would then interpret even differently than Lightroom will. So like I said, I just like to start with the most flat of the profiles to begin with. And that's it. Now the image is all ready to be processed and that typically takes me less than a minute to get it set up to be where I want it to be. If you're wondering how I expose my images in camera, I made two videos recently that show you how to use both aperture priority and the histogram in a simple and easy way to expose properly in camera every single time. If you haven't seen those, I'll link them below and you can check them out. That way, when I post my next video that shows you how I use each and every one of these sliders to process my photos simply and quickly, you'll have your own image that's properly exposed to work with yourself. Okay, I hope that helped. And if you feel like it did, please hit that like button as that definitely helps. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and that little notification bell to stay in the loop around here. And I'll see you in the next video.